At AEW's first ever pay-per-view, Double or Nothing 2019, John Moxley shocked the wrestling world by making his first appearance in AEW in front of the Las Vegas crowd. Speculation was rife about him showing up in AEW because of the tweet that WWE sent out saying that he won't renew his contract and his vignette that he posted on the internet of him breaking out of prison. And just for the record, thank God he left WWE. But ever since John Moxley has been in AEW, he has carried AEW on his back and has been one of the most important flag bearers for the wrestling revolution. And he has proved that he bleeds AEW's black, white, and gold. And it seems like John Moxley was made for AEW, and AEW was made for John Moxley. Well, that's still a better love story than Twilight. But anyway, as soon as John Moxley showed up in AEW, he almost immediately entered into a feud with Kenny Omega. And their first altercation was at Double or Nothing, with Moxley and Omega brawling all their way through the crowd and Moxley throwing Omega of poker chips and Moxie stood over Omega with the lights beaming on him to end the pay-per-view in a hue of glory. John Moxie's assault of Kenny Omega then crossed over to the very first episode of AEW's Dynamite on October 2nd where this is basically what happened. Center, Seeing John Moxley paradigm shift Kenny Omega through glass left everyone going crazy as it was the first taste of the glorious ultraviolence that AEW is known for today that is so addictive. John Moxley and Kenny Omega's feud was supposed to culminate in a lights out match at AEW's All Out 2019 but unfortunately John Moxley suffered a staff infection on his elbow due to excessive use. So this match was called off. John Moxley's injury was in due part to him wrestling close to 20 matches in about 28 days in New Japan Pro Wrestling's G1 Climax 2019 which took place prior to All Out 2019. And the fact that this injury happened in this manner added more fuel to the fire because Kenny Omega basically spinned it into an angle that John Moxley was just trying to copy him and do the same things that he's done, seeing that Kenny Omega was the winner of the G1 Climax in 2016. And John Moxley's angle on Kenny Omega was that Kenny Omega was just a myth and he was going to dispel that myth. And so after many great segments and brawls, John Moxley's and Kenny Omega's feud culminated in the first ever Lights Out match at AEW's full game. 2019. And this match was mine and many other people's first introduction to hardcore wrestling. And it was a brutal and bloody affair as there were many spots in this match that left you going, WHAT THE HELL? The Maryland State Athletic Commission even fined AEW $10,000 because this match was so brutal. But this match showed that the real John Moxley was out to play and he was going to destroy anyone that was in his path. This feud between John Moxley and Kenny Omega continues later down the road. And I'll get to it soon. But in the meantime, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't because it helps with the algorithm. But anyway, the next feud that John Moxley entered into was against Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho formed the new faction, Inner Circle, on the debut episode of AEW's Dynamite. And he basically he saw that Moxie was a dangerous man on the come up, so he decided to offer Moxie a place in the inner circle. Chris Jericho offered John Moxie a 4 GT, which is about $500,000, and 49% ownership in the inner circle LLC. This was quite a sweet deal, to be honest, so John Moxie accepted Chris Jericho's offer for about five minutes. He said that he was just joking by joining the inner circle and he broke a bottle of champagne over Chris Jericho's head and he laid out the inner circle afterwards and he stole the key to the 4GT. After Chris Jericho got the keys to his $500,000 car stolen, he must have been like, a little bit of the sadness. <laughs> And the following week, Chris Jericho was so enraged by what happened that he stabbed John Moxley in the eye with one of the spikes from his jacket. And John Moxley sold this injury by wearing an eye patch for a while. And John Moxley basically got his revenge by stabbing Santana of the Inner Circle in the eye, which caused him also to wear an eye patch. And this led to the first ever eye for an eye match between Santana of the Inner Circle and John Moxley. And this match was appropriately named because both of them were victims of eye attacks at the hands of the other. Santana lost this eye for an eye match, and in the following week, the inner circle introduced the hired gun Jeff Cobb to challenge John Moxley, and Moxley eventually ended up beating Jeff Cobb in a match. Chris Jericho and John Moxley's feud culminated at AEW's Revolution 2020 for the AEW's World's Heavyweight Championship, and it was a solid match. But the most memorable spot was when John Moxley took off his eye patch to reveal that his eye has healed, and he finished off Jericho for the one, two, three. John Moxley winning the AEW World Championship was really, really satisfying to see because it felt so good seeing someone who's gone through so much bullshit 
in WWE, making it in a place that is other than WWE and on a huge stage. John Moxley was on top of the world and was hot as holy hell. It seemed like nothing could go wrong with Moxley at the forefront of AEW as the world champion. That is, until the pandemic happened. The pandemic halted a lot of Moxley's momentum as he wasn't featured heavily on Dynamite in the early pandemic episodes because of traveling issues. John Moxley has this unique skill to bounce off the crowd and he has this electrifying synergy with the audience that is difficult to put into words but with fans gone the synergy was lost and this was evident in his first title defense in his first match back against Jake Hager. This match was 30 minutes long and honestly it wasn't very good mainly because the eerie atmosphere of Daly's place engulfed the match and fans weren't accustomed to this. This match was basically like this. Half Nelson, two, and gets a three count. But John Moxley's passion for wrestling still shone through, as he had this brooding, feral intensity that you could still feel through your TV screens while watching at home. And this helped to elevate the AEW World Championship to new heights, even while being slap bang in the middle of a pandemic. John Moxley then entered into a feud with Brody Lee, and this feud was good for what it was, as it was a classic story of the lone wolf against a pack of hyenas, and Brody Lee even stole the AEW World Championship at some point. And this feud culminated at AEW's Double or Nothing 2020 in an entertaining match where John Moxley got the win. John Moxley then defended the title against a series of opponents that he helped to elevate, like Brian Cage at Fighter Fest, which was a really good match, and Darby Allen on AEW Dynamite. John Moxley's defense against Darby Allen was a storytelling masterpiece, and it went off the story that they told in their first match in the early AEW Dynamite episodes, as Darby played the role of a prideful and somewhat arrogant young kid who refuses to back down against any challenge, even if there's a big possibility that he's going to get burnt. And John Moxley played the role of the grizzly the old timer who is reluctant to teach the young kid a lesson but he will have to do so if the young kid messes with him. And Darby Allen did mess with John Moxley so John Moxley taught him a lesson. And after John Moxley beat Darby Allen, he held Darby's lifeless body in his arms, almost like saying sorry it had to come to this. It was kind of like one of those sad death scenes from the movies. During all of this, John Moxley was in a feud with MJF, and this feud really showed how good MJF was on the mic, especially in his State of AEW address, where he was doing a presidential-like campaign to be the AEW World Champion. MJF said that John Moxley was a dictator, and he made John Moxley sign a contract that said that he would not be able to use the paradigm shift at AEW's All Out. But in a turn of events, John Moxley did end up using the paradigm shift to finish off MJF at AEW's All Out 2020. And this was a very solid match. This feud really did well wonders for MJF as it showed how precocious he really was and how capable he was at a main event level. John Moxley then defended his title against The Butcher and Lance Archer, but one of the greatest feuds of John Moxley's run with the AEW World Championship was with Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston participated in a casino battle royale at AEW's All Out 2020 at which he was never eliminated, so that's how he got his first match for the AEW World Championship against John Moxley. And Eddie Kingston lost this match by passing out and the referee stopped the match because Eddie Kingston Kingston could literally not tap out. And this led to Eddie and Moxley deciding to have an I Quit match at AEW's Full Gear 2020. And in the build up to this I Quit match, this is where the feud really really shone bright as this promo segment between John Moxley and Eddie Kingston was just pure gold. In this promo segment, Eddie Kingston laments how he sold out just like John Moxley and he did it all in an effort to become world champion. And John Moxley says that he never thought that he'd get burned by his old time friend Eddie Kingston. And he reminds Eddie how he ate at his mom's kitchen table and the look on Eddie's face after John Moxley mentioned his mother was priceless. It was at this moment he knew he fucked up. Uh -oh. I'm gonna whoop your ass. But anyway this led to their match at full gear and this match was hard hitting and bloody as expected and the finish was awesome as Eddie Kingston muttered the words I quit after John Moxley put him in a bulldog chokehold with barbed wire around his arm. At the same pay per view a demon from the past in the form of a newly heel Kenny Omega came running back as he won the AEW men's eliminated tournament which meant that he was entitled to a world championship shot so he confronted John Moxley after he won his match against Eddie Kingston and this set a match in early December for AEW's winter 
coming. And this was a special episode of AEW Dynamite. John Moxley unfortunately couldn't exercise the demon from his past, and he lost the world championship to Kenny Omega, ending his title reign at 277 days. But honestly, John Moxley's title reign was iconic, and I am of the belief that nobody in AEW could have carried the title better than him through the pandemic. It never ever felt like Moxley was just doing it for a check. It felt like Moxley really wanted to be there and make AEW work, despite all the obstacles. But anyway, John Moxley kept on feuding with Kenny Omega, and in a tag match in the build-up for the rubber match at Revolution, Kenta from New Japan Pro Wrestling showed up to attack Moxley, who was the holder of the IWGP US Heavyweight Championship, and this opened up the forbidden door. Kenta showing up to AEW was massive and it was all because of John Moxley as he was the driving force behind the forbidden door being broken down and I'll explain more in a story so far video on the forbidden door in the future and by the way let me know what other story so far videos on which wrestlers you'd like to see in the comments but anyway to finish Moxley off Kenny Omega proposed that they have an exploding barbed wire death match so Kenny Omega got to work on building the evil structure and his and John Moxley's feud culminated at AEW's revolution 2021 for the AEW World's Championship in an exploding barbed wire death match. And there was a lot of pressure on this match because this type of match hadn't really been seen in the USA and the match itself was actually really good but to be totally honest the finish sucked. There's an old saying in wrestling that goes that people only remember the finish and this rang true as the finish of the match was the only thing that people could talk about online for the next few days. But right before the botched explosion, Eddie Kingston came out for the save and by the way Eddie Kingston sold that explosion like a king. But because he came out for the save for John Moxley it rekindled their friendship and they formed a tag team and Moxley and Eddie's tag team is a perfect partnership in many ways because they have a unique bounciness and playfulness with each other that is underlined with a ruthless aggression. Eddie and John Moxley's tag team is a match made in heaven because they're real life buddies and they both have a realness and a rawness that is unmatched and the crowd loves this so they are superb baby faces. Ever since Eddie and Mox started teaming they picked up a lot of wins and they started feuding with the Young Bucks and their feud with the Young Bucks was really really entertaining as Mox and Eddie even stole the Young Bucks sneakers at one point but this feud culminated in a tag team match at AEW's first ever full capacity show in almost 500 days at AEW's Double or Nothing 2021 for the AEW World Tag Team Championships. And Eddie and Mox and the Young Bucks absolutely tore the house down and it was one of the best matches of the night and was totally fitting for the first pay-per-view with fans back. And John Moxley is the forbidden door. He even said it himself. I am the freaking forbidden door. So since he's lost the AEW's World's Heavyweight Championship, he defended the IWGP US Heavyweight Championship on AEW television versus Yuji Nagata, Carl Anderson and Lance Archer and Moxley put over the latter in a huge fashion in the Texas death match. And ever since then, John Moxley has faced New Japan's top stars like Satoshi Kojima at AEW's All Out and most recently Minoru Suzuki. And John Moxley more than likely wants the IWGP US Heavyweight Championship back very very soon. So I have a funny funny feeling that one of these days we're going to see him in a match versus the ace Hiroshi Tanahashi who is the current holder of the IWGP US Heavyweight Championship. And right now it seems like AEW is the cool place to be as AEW's climate is filled with new signees that were huge in WWE like CM Punk, Brian Danielson, Christian Cage, Adam Cole and more. But let's not forget that John Moxley was one of the first huge stars of WWE to jump ship to AEW. So basically he didn't hop on a trend when he joined AEW and he took a massive risk when he did this. He put his career and reputation on the line because quite frankly there were no guarantees that AEW would succeed. But despite knowing all of this he still chose to sign to AEW and John Moxley has legitimized AEW as a company and caused the wrestling world to further take notice of AEW and take them as a serious threat to WWE. John Moxley wasn't part of the people who started the wrestling revolution but he's one of the wrestling revolution's most important figures as he's a symbol for going against the grain and doing what you have to do for the sake and the love for pro wrestling. And that's why he's the heart and soul of AEW. Thank you for watching the video. Who would you like to see me do a video on next? Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. But anyway, goodbye.